Do you need to replace the water pump on your small block Ford? Stick around and I'll show you how to do it. What's up guys, my name is Andy, and in this video we're going to replace the water pump on my 289. While we're in there, we're actually also going to do the timing cover as well, but this main video is more about the water pump. There's a couple things we need to do to get, uh, get everything ready to get this thing uh, uninstalled from the car, so let's go over that. So to do the water pump on a 289, you, first thing you need to do is obviously drain the coolant. However, uh, I just got done doing a couple videos where I replaced the manifold and the carburetor and stuff like that, so I'd already actually drained the coolant uh, from this car. But for those of you who are unfamiliar, there's a little, usually a little valve on the bottom of your radiator. Just turn that valve and you can drain all the coolant out and you need to get it all out of the way. You also may find it's easier to remove the, the radiator altogether to get this out. We're going to try to do it with the radiator in place, uh, partially because I've got the, the coolant lines to the transmission. I've got an automatic transmission in here and so disconnecting all that kind of stuff creates more work. So we're going to cross our fingers and see if we can do this without removing the radiator. But once you get the coolant drained, then we can start going through and, and start taking off the various pieces like, you know, the alternator, get that out of the way, and then we'll take off the, the crank pulley and stuff like that and get stuff kind of prepared to get the, the water pump taken off of the timing cover. Now we're also going to replace the timing cover uh, in this particular project. Uh, I've got a little bit of a leak that I can't tell if it's from the front or the back side. So while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and replace that timing cover and the gaskets that surround that as well. So let's go ahead and start taking everything apart and then we'll take a look at the parts that we've got to work with. Before we finish taking off the water pump off the car, I just want to go over what we're going to be replacing with. This is just an OEM replacement style pump, nothing fancy about it. And the reason why I'm showing you this is uh, partially, one thing you can do, because there's of all the fasteners that we have to take out when we take the water pump off, they're all different lengths. And so, you know, one kind of a pro tip is, if you take the new one and you, as you take the bolts out, stick them in this, in the holes of this one where they go, so that you don't get them mixed up because there are different lengths and stuff like that. And then that will help you keep track of the bolts that you have. Also, while we're here, so this is the water pump, and then on the back of this, uh, there's actually a gasket in here, but I went ahead and bought extra sets just in case, uh, just in case I ruined one or, you know, I wasn't positive if this was going to come with it or not. So I got an extra one there, and then uh, just another Felpro gasket, and then this gasket set here is for the timing cover. And uh, we won't be using these little pieces, and I'll explain that when we get there, but we will need this seal. We're gonna need that, and we won't need this seal here, and I'll explain that when we get there. But let's look at the timing cover. So this is another piece that we're gonna be replacing. Uh, we don't necessarily need to replace this on my car. Um, I don't know. I don't know yet if the one that's on there is fine. However, um, what I wanted to point out is if you do replace the timing cover, and you have, you know, some of these older uh, 289s have this timing pin on there. Uh, you can buy these timing covers without that that pin, and you can just buy a, a timing piece that just utilizes these bolt holes and, and puts a little marker for the for the timing marks on the crank pulley, but or the the, the, crank, the harmonic balancer. But this is just a OEM replacement. Nothing again, nothing fancy about this. And also, it does have a, a hole for the dipstick. And I noticed that some of them didn't have that as well. So just be be careful when you guys are if you are going to be replacing your timing chain cover. Uh, that you get one that has all the right pieces for it. And then um, when we get to it, we'll also talk about how this gasket is going to work and what we need to do to get everything prepped and ready to go before we put this on here and, and get everything done there. So let's go ahead and finish get finished taking off the water pump off the old car. And while I take each bolt out, we'll put it in here and that'll just kind of keep track of the bolts that we have.
And now that we got this water pump off, uh, I couldn't take this bracket off because this pulley is in the way and you need to take the fan off to get the pulley off. And with the radiator in place, it's really hard to do, but I figured we can just go ahead and leave it on there. And then before we put the new water pump on there, I'll just assemble everything from here onto there. I just have to make sure that I have to put this bolt in place before I go ahead and put it in the car. All right, let's go ahead and get the timing cover off. If you were just doing the water pump, then you could stop here and just clean up this surface and get it ready to put the new water pump on. However, I'm going to replace this timing cover. More specifically, I want to replace this gasket back here. And so we're going to go ahead and finish taking the rest of this off. Now, on the bottom half, depending on the kind of gasket you have on your oil pan, uh, you can just take the first two bolts on this side and this side out of the oil pan, and then you can take the cover off, you know, with the rest of these bolts up here. But you could take that off, and then it gives you pieces in the kit which are these pieces right here. There's these two cork pieces right here and then this new seal for the, the bottom of the timing cover. So those, two, those new pieces allow you to just go ahead and take this off and replace everything and put it back on. However, I've got a one-piece seal underneath here and I actually glued the one-piece seal in. I put some of that extra RTV stuff, that gasket maker, on there and so it's kind of stuck to the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and take the oil pan off, which you wouldn't normally need to do. I'm going to take that off and then I'll be able to take this timing cover off. Also, don't forget, we need to take the fuel pump off, and that's just a couple of bolts here holding that on. Before we pull this harmonic balancer off, we need to get this crank pulley out of the way. I just have three bolts holding it on, then we can get to the big bolt that's holding on the, the harmonic balancer. So here's a look behind the timing cover and I wonder if, I, part of the problem I was having with this gasket is, see this water jacket runs right through this gasket through the timing cover that goes to the water pump and I'm wondering if the reason why I've got moisture in here and down in the bottom, which I'll show you on the timing cover, is because maybe this gasket had failed. Over here looking at the timing cover, if you look down inside the seal there, you can see how that looks kind of milkshakey, chalky. That's water mixed with oil and we don't want that there. And I suspect that here's the, this is the backside of the timing cover. And this was that port we were looking at on the block. I'm wondering if maybe that this wasn't failing or maybe this side was failing. Um, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not the best seal job on here. I wonder if because what I was having the problem before is down in, if this is the front of the motor, you know, and the, and the timing cover sits like this on the motor, the water pump sits on there. I would think I was having from the thermostat housing, the leak that I was having was catching up water, was pooling up down inside there, and it was running down the back side of this timing cover down inside the block, because I noticed a little bit of moisture on the end of the dipstick one of the days. And uh, so I'm thinking that was part of my problem. So I'm glad that we took this off. Now we can go ahead and start preparing to put the new one on. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with putting the new seal in the new timing cover. Before we put the new seal in, so this is part of the, this is that kit that we got with the, all the gaskets and stuff for this timing cover. This is the seal that comes with it. And this is the old style seal that goes with the timing cover that has a, a lip on the inside here and you would actually drive the seal from the back. Here you can see the old crank seal. There's a lip in the old timing cover here where that, where that seal stops and rests against and you would insert it from the back side. But we're gonna use the new style. We don't need this one anymore. Um, this one will still work, and if you got this one, you can still make it work, and by pressing it in there, you're going to be fine. However, 
This seal is the one that is, is really what the one we want. This is the National Oil Seals part number 2692. I'll put the, the description in the, I'll put the part number in the description below. But this is the one we want because this has a lip that will not only guarantee that it's driven into the, fr the right depth, but it can be serviced with this on the car. So down the road, if you ever have a problem with this seal, we can pull this off with this attached to the car and then put another one on there. Whereas this one, it's a little harder to do uh, with this style. So we're gonna skip the one that came with the kit and we're gonna go with this one. And what we wanna do is we're gonna put a little bit of that gasket, uh, that, you know, this ultra black gasket sealer stuff on here on this edge. And then we're gonna just help seal that up and then we'll drive it on. Also, when you're doing that, you need to be careful that the, when you're driving this on this lip, you can, you can break this off if you're not supporting it. So I'm gonna put a piece of wood underneath the edge here and support it as we go ahead and drive this in and, and get that set in place. All right, something that I made to kind of keep track of all the bolts is I just took the water pump and I laid it down and I just did an outline of it and I drew where all this, the bolt holes go. And then because of most of those fasteners that I had from, you know, taken out, they're all rusty and old and tired. I'm gonna go ahead and put new fasteners in here. And for this, I just wrote down the length of what each fastener, three and a half inches, two and a half inches of all the fasteners. They're all 5 16 18 thread, except for this one right here. This one. Is, uh, holds that little arm that goes down to the uh, the bottom of the alternator and positions the, the alternator. That one's the 3 six, three eighths by 16, it's only one inch long. But all the rest of these are 5 16 18 threads. And then um, down here, this is the timing cover, and if these were the top two that bolt into the motor, and these are the bottom two on each side, I know it's not really the right shape, but you get the idea. Also, I wanted to point out, on my timing cover, this one, this new one, these fasteners, these are deeper on this on this new cover versus the old cover. The old cover, the fastener boss was was lower than that. Um, and so you may, if you use the old timing cover or the original, these fasteners, I think these two on the bottom are are a shorter length than these two. I don't remember what it out went, but anyways, uh, just pay attention to that. That if you do get a new timing cover, you might have different or fa different fastener length. And these numbers here are for this new cover and the new water pump. So just something to make it easy to get past this part and keeping track of the bolts. And if you look from the backside, you can see uh, the various lengths that I have uh, here. But um, yeah, something to keep track of, of uh, the bolt lengths. Don't forget to clean this surface in here. Uh, before we put everything back, we're gonna wanna make sure that all the surfaces on here is clean and ready to go and, and get all that gunk and stuff out of here. Here's a good time to kind of get this stuff out of there. Don't forget we wanna just clean off the outside edge of this uh, harmonic balancer before we put it back in. And if there's any high edges or high spots in there, just take some some 220 or better paper and just kind of clean up the any, any high spots that you might have. It's also a good idea to just go ahead and run a tap through each one of these holes just to make sure they're all clean and good to go. The next step is to get this gasket ready to be put onto the back of the timing cover and then onto the block. And what we're gonna use is this ultra black gasket maker and I'm gonna run a bead all the way around this and then I'm gonna smear it around and you wanna smear it on both sides, particularly around this spot here and, and this spot over here. But we're gonna cover this whole thing and then we're gonna, the nice thing about it is it'll just stick to the back of this timing cover and then we can stick it on the block. Okay, now this is all thoroughly coated. Both sides are good. We're stuck onto the timing cover. We do want to put a little bit of oil on this seal before we put it on the motor, so let's do that, and then we're going to stick it to the block. Before we put this timing cover on, notice that I've got this, it's just a, a long bolt that I just cut the head off, and I'm going to use it as a dowel to kind of line this up as I put it on there. Also, it's important, it's important to note that 
This block doesn't have those dowel pins on the bottom of the timing cover, so the timing cover actually will be positioned by the crankshaft, or by the harmonic balancer hub. So when you put this on here, if you put a couple bolts in there, just kind of put it in there enough to hold the timing cover to the block, but don't tighten them down because we're gonna put the harmonic balancer on and that will help center the timing cover so that the seal is centered correctly around the hub and then we can go ahead and tighten down the bolts. And just like the seal on the timing cover, we want to put a little bit of oil on the, the hub of this harmonic balancer. Alright, now that we got the harmonic balancer on all the way, we're going to go ahead and torque it down here in just a second. But I wanted to point out, okay, so you can finish putting the fasteners in, the two up top, and then the two that go on this side, and the two that go on this side. You go ahead and tighten those down now that this harmonic balancer hub is centering the, uh, the timing cover because they don't have those dial pins. So let's go ahead and torque down the harmonic balancer. The book says 70 to 90 foot-pounds, so we're going to split it and do 80 foot-pounds. All right, just like the other gasket, we need to go ahead and coat the whole gasket on the back side of this water pump. So we take this cover off, and this water pump actually included a gasket, but I had bought extra ones just in case. So we're gonna need to use one for this side, then we'll put this cap on, put these fasteners back and hold it in place, and then we need to do one for that goes on this side. And all we really need to do on this one here is just focus on putting that ultra black stuff on this area and this area. We don't need to put it up here or down here, that's not gonna be needed. And because it's easier for me to put this bracket on here and put this this on in place, put the fan on in place before we put it in the car, just because how easy it is, because getting to these bolts with the radiator in the way is kind of difficult. So we're gonna do ahead and just do it right now. We can go ahead and stick on the gasket that separates the water pump from the timing cover. And again, we're using that dowel that we had before just to kind of line things up and get everything in place here. And because we got this stuff on here, it'll just stick in place, which makes it easy for putting that water pump on. Change of plan, I took that, that pin out that we're using as a dowel because, because I got the radiator in place, I can't move the water pump far enough and forward to bring it onto that dowel pin. So we're just gonna come in from the side. Okay, now just go ahead and put all the rest of the bolts in and then we're done with the water pump. All right, now we got all the rest of those fasteners in place. Everything's good to go. We can go ahead and start putting the radiator hoses back on. We'll put the lower one on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just run this bypass for the heater hose because I don't have it. The heater is not hooked up right now. Those hoses were cut when I got the car. So I'm gonna deal with that later. So for now, I'm just gonna run the bypass. We'll put this elbow on. We'll put the upper hose on and, uh, and get that done. Also. Uh, don't forget to put the fuel pump back in if you're running that. Uh, I'm going to do something different with the setup here um, coming up, so for now I'm just going to leave it off the car, but normally you need to, to put that back in. Also, just a heads up, the bottom of this gasket between the timing cover and the block, there's a little bit of a lip here. If you took your oil pan off like I did, you're going to want to take a razor blade to cut that off and get it smooth before you put the, the oil pan gasket and the oil pan back on. Also, the last thing that I need to do here is put the dipstick tube back in. I'm going to put some of that gasket maker on the end of the tube before I put it in there and I'll, and I'll attach it to the car.
All right, guys, that does it. That is a water pump and timing cover on a Ford 289. Uh, normally, this is where we would put the, the coolant back in and put the motor, the, you know, get the motor started and get it going. But I've got a couple of the projects that I want to do still, so I'm not quite done with that yet. So but I'm sure you guys could refill your radiator. Also, be careful when you're tightening these bolts on the aluminum parts. Uh, this top bolt here, I over tightened it and I had to put a bolt through it and put it out on the back uh, because I, I got a little overzealous with the tightening on the aluminum. It's, it's just too soft compared to that steel. So just be careful of that. I also wanted to point out that the this little cheat sheet thing that I made that I showed you guys during the video, actually this bolt right here uh, it says 1.25. Really, that should be one and a half inches, and that's the one that I over when I over tightened it because it wasn't going in there far enough, and I just grabbed the threads and just stripped them right out. So that's why I had to put a longer bolt. So do a one and a half inch bolt there. All right, guys. So that's it. That's a, that takes care of that. That's how you do a water pump, and um, on to the next project. All right, guys. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, and if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.